Welcome back to Green State TV. We're here with John Entine, Senior Fellow at the Center for Health and Risk Communication at George Mason University. Could you start today talking to us a bit about the challenge we face feeding the world in the 21st century? What we have to do is roll back the clock to 2008 to get a sense of what will happen if we don't address the food security problems that are literally one of the biggest challenges of the 21st century. We had riots all across the developing world because food prices were going through the roof. Prices are driven by demand. Um, we have growing populations throughout the world um, and we have, have tools to address this. We have genetic engineering, uh, which has really been a great boon to increasing productivity, crop productivity, um, and we have chemicals. If we don't address the food security issues, if we don't apply technology, if we don't develop the latest chemical techniques to essentially extending the Green Revolution, we are going to have a crisis on our hands that literally will challenge the future of the world. But unfortunately, there is forces out there. There are advocacy groups, there are um, government agencies that are so risk averse that they don't balance out the genuine threat of people going to bed at night hungry, families dying from malnutrition, and they set that off against um, really fantastic, almost um, projected ideas of what might be dangers from chemical substances that have been proven safe time and time again, that we literally are sacrificing the next generation. Um, and we can't afford to do this if we really hope for a productive world. But some people say we can solve the problem with organic agriculture. Why isn't that the solution? Organics is a solution, but not a solution to world hunger. It's a boutique solution for um, affluent societies that want to reduce on the edges some kind of environmental degradation. But in a massive challenge like world hunger, organics is like a pop gun trying to fight a war. You can't do it without the um, massive um, technological advances that science has presented to us, um, if you don't take advantage of that, you're literally condemning huge segments of the world population to malnutrition and even death. What about people who say they don't want to have chemicals in their food? The reality of it is chemicals are everywhere. We are chemicals. We have to understand that chemicals in and of themselves are not inherently dangerous. What is dangerous is the how much we're exposed to something over how long a period of time. Frequency, duration, those are the issues that you have to address when it comes to chemicals. The question you have to ask is, is the chemical being uh, applied, whether it's synthetic or natural, and many natural chemicals are as harmful or much more harmful than many synthetic chemicals. You have to look at what the potential benefits are from a chemical and what the dangers are. This is heavily scrutinized by the government. Um, this is regulated. And the reality of it is, is that our food supply in the United States, the conventional food supply, is the safest in the world. What about people's concern about cancer? The suggestion that we have an increase in the incidences of cancer as a result of chemical exposure is just not true. That's inflammatory. It's not based on the facts. The cancer rates are going down across almost all indices. And one of the reasons it's going down is because we know, now know how to manage the environment much better than we used to. Okay. So why not better safe than sorry? Why don't we just ban these chemicals to be safe? It's better safe than sorry sounds like a reasonable, prudent policy approach. But it's very naive and actually will harm the most vulnerable in society. What it really means is we will not innovate, we will not take advantage of technological advances that really address the sustainability challenges that we face. We face water deficits, we face land use problems, we have um, farm machinery that is carbon based, that belches out um, CO2. Technological innovation can help address those. Prudent use of chemicals is part of an array of tools that farmers have, modern technology has, that fuel the green revolution in Mexico, in India, and can be used to address the developing world's food challenges that are really the great crises that face us in the 21st century. So what effect is this having on developing nations? In the developing world, we face huge food challenges. Malnourishment is rampant. These are issues that we've confronted in the West over the past century. The green revolution, which was driven by um, chemical innovation, technology, that addressed hunger in Mexico, in India, and now we're facing these identical challenges in countries that are growing hand over fist, and we're going to say to them, no, you can't have the tools that we used to feed our country 
and essentially address our nutritional needs, that's an abomination. We'll say chemicals are bad for the environment because it's not sustainable. I, th I think we have to put aside this notion that somehow chemicals are harmful or not sustainable. Chemicals are everywhere. The question is, how do we use them and can we use them in a targeted, smart way? When we look at agricultural production, we 30, 40 years ago, we used much more land than we use today. Now, we can farm on a very small um, amount of land compared to what we used to do, and our yields are far, far greater because we know how to smartly use chemicals and technology. With modern use of um, chemicals, we can cut down on soil erosion, we can cut down on use of carbon belching um, machinery. There's a wide array of things that really address sustainable issues in a broader sense. We have to recognize that chemicals and sustainability are really not contradictory, they're actually very complementary.